So this one about radial fragmentation type and as you can see there are a lot of properties so that will be a little bit longer than previous fragmentation types. And first one just a basic setup heat fragment and just to show you how radial fragmentation type looks like. This is uh, basically all the properties turned off right now. It's the simplest uh, what you can get. And now I will start improving this um, next uh, box. So in this case, uh, in the first case, I used this radius one. It measures in units, and you can see here it used uh, it created this radial fragmentation type in range of one unit. For this one, I will increase it to two, and now I will have bigger, uh, bigger circle. So, uh, and uh, as you can see, I will show you. I won't, I won't show you all the properties one by one, but uh, I will show you the most important first. So. In first, in this example that here, I used five rays, uh, five rings, and ten rays. So you can count every one. You can see there are ten this rays and five rings. So this is where you can define amount of rays and rings. So for this example, I increased my amount of rings and rays. I said ten rings and twenty rays, and now you can see I get much more fragments in this case. And obviously this kind of radial fragmentation looks not interesting. So because my divergence here is set to zero and it also measures in uh, in units. So uh, for our next example here, I will increase my divergence to 0 0.2. And now you can see it start, it's, uh, start looks more interesting. Now it, there are more this random uh, offset for every fragment. Uh, so, again, um, just to show you the difference, for this example, I'm using my restrict to plane on, which makes sure that all, all the fragments, all the inner surface will have this 90 degrees relative to this outer plane. So you can see there are no any, they have the same angle relative to the outer surface here. So for next example, I'm using, I will turn off my restrict to plane here. It's off. So now you can see it, uh, all the fragments here inside start getting this uh, different angle for inner surface. And again, uh, in some cases, uh, you may need something like this and not just this uh, straight uh, lines. So Next property I want to show you here is focusing, like this focus and focus strength, and for rings. And uh, so as you can see in this example here, all the fragments, the whole, uh, let me select the subject. Okay, so you can see uh, my focus here is zero, which means uh, it's not, uh, it doesn't mean that it's not used because it defines uh, the range of focusing, but uh, my focus strength is zero, which means that this property is off by default, and it defines uh, the offset of your rings. And in this case, you can see that every uh, distance between all rings is the same. So again, it looks uh, not so interesting. So for this example here, I will change. Uh, well, again, I will just fragment it just to show you how it looks like with the same uh, with, uh, turn off focusing. Uh, and some uh, divergence. And in this example, I will use my focus strength as 100, which means it's uh, maximum focus strength you can get. And now you can see it creates, well, I think it will be better if I will delete both of the examples here and uh, change my divergence to zero. So it will be easier, it will be, easy, it will be easier to see the difference. So this one again, my focus is turned off. And for this one, I will set my focus strength to 100 and my focus itself is zero, which means uh, that it will, well, as you can see now, it uh, creates more tiny fragments at the center and there are bigger, there's bigger distance between rings uh, here. So this is uh, what means focusing, it just, uh, Sets all the rings closer to center, but uh, also you can like in this example here, uh, all the properties are the same. But I set my focus to 100, which means 
I moved my focus from the center to the out of the circle to its edge. And in this case, it will create, as you can see, there are bigger distance between rings at the center and less distance here uh, at the edge of this circle. So just a small uh, property to control to make an, at, uh, all the to make distance between rings not the same like in this example. And there is also another property to control. It's called random rings. So basically, what it does, it creates uh, some random distance, adds some variation into this. And in this example, I'm using basically it's off again. Uh, all distances between rings is the same. And for next example, I set it random rings to 75. And now you can see uh, how it makes some distance like this. Distance is small. This is bigger than small than bigger. So at, uh, using this random rings property, you can add some variation in distance between your rings. And next example, I will show you how race works. Again, there is property random race. Uh, race uh, and for this example, I um, use it, uh, set it to zero, just to show you how it looks like. Again, all distances between all rays is uh, the same. And the next example, I set it to 100. And here you can see that uh, rays get different uh, distance between them, like small distance and bigger distance. So again, another property to control uh, to add some variation in your radial fragmentation type. And obviously all these properties should be used together and not just uh, one by one. I just show you uh, every property uh, separately so you will see the difference. And this example with twist, another race property. Uh, I will set it to 10. As you can see, my random race is zero. So which means all the uh, distance between rays should be the same. And here you can see that adding twist kind of start twisting all the fragments around the center. And this property measures in angles. So I just added 10 degrees angle for every next uh, fragment in the, in the ring. So for this example, I set it to 45. Uh, and uh, well, here you can see uh, the twist getting uh, uh, got bigger and it's more noticeable now and for this one I set it to 90 and in this case basically it creates every next uh, fragment has 90 degrees twist so this is basically how it looks like one array okay so Another property I want to show you is this uh, center and easier to control it with this move uh, hand tool. So you need to turn on the show and as you can see in all um, previous examples, uh, all fragmentation types, they created radial fragmentation starting from the center of the object. This is because uh, uh, they use this center helper here. This is where you can, how we can control it needs to turn on it and then you can move it at any point here, it fragment. Now you can see that it will create radial fragmentation starting from this point. So we can move it. Also, it is important that a radial fragmentation type is not only using position and direction, you also can rotate it. Let's say this way. And now you can see it creates fragments uh, relative to this point of view. So it's important what's your center position and angle for radial fragmentation type. So here you set my center. So I will I will add some variation. I will add some focusing random rays. Decrease twist. So you can see uh, radial fragmentation type, it's all the properties used. Thank you for watching.